Hello everybody and welcome back to Fantasy Football Fix and to another episode of Eddie vs. The Algorithm where if you're a returning viewer you'll be knowing that we're taking you through the computer generated free hit team for each game week of the FPL season and seeing whether I, myself, FPL Phillips, can beat it with my own personal free hit draft for each week and we're counting up the score so that we can see at the end of the season who is better at FPL myself or just some random computer rated machine that uses loads of statistics. So far it's very very close and we'll have a Game Week 36 recap coming for you in the next episode due to the fact that we still have a game left tonight with Brighton against Newcastle. But yeah, if you are new around here, then do make sure to hit that subscribe button if you're one of those viewers who watches along but doesn't actually choose. The button is down there. It's free, of course, as you know. It is much appreciated. Without any more dilly-dallying, let's get into things and we're heading straight into having a look at the algorithm team for Double Game Week 37. <laughs> And for the algorithm this week, we've got a predicted points total of 104 points, so a very healthy total, but one that isn't too surprising, given the fact that we have quite a few big teams with double game weeks this week. So let's get straight into things, shall we? And in between the sticks for the algorithm side is going to be David De Gea, who I think is an interesting one, and one that I actually went for in the game week 36 team. Contrary to what a lot of people were thinking, Manchester United, they did manage to pick up a clean sheet. Going for that double defence did work out in my favour, which you'll see as mentioned in the recap next week. But again, I think United are probably one of the better defences to target. They are better at home. They've got Chelsea at home, which I think is a decent fixture for them. Bournemouth away isn't too bad of a game either. And really, in general, the double game weeks, although they're for some big teams, they don't look the absolute best. And with things like Manchester City and the Champions League final and a lot of Pep Roulette being risky at the moment, I think going with David De Gea in goal is a nice option, especially when it's not for certain that Edison's going to play both games in the double. In fact, it looks relatively likely that one of the other backup keepers might come in for Man City. So De Gea is the choice between the sticks. In defence, we're going to see a back three that does actually feature a Man City defensive asset with Estupinian, Akanji being that man, and then Luke Shaw as the back three. So we've got a lot of doublers coming in early to this side. Estupinian's already picked up a very healthy double-digit haul with how well he did in that first game against Arsenal. So congrats to any owners out there of Estupinian. And yeah, overall, he just does look like the best Brighton defensive asset. The only reason to not go for him was the, perhaps the fear of rotation, but it doesn't seem to be affecting him too much. He's playing a lot of minutes, and I can see him doing that for the rest of the campaign. Two home games, albeit one of them being a tricky fixture against Man City, who look very dominant at the moment, and of course on the way to winning the title. And Man City, in their other fixture, face Chelsea at home. So, you know, we're seeing a lot of these fixtures where United and City are both playing Chelsea at home. We know that's already a pretty nice game for both those sides. Manchester United also coming in for them is Luke Shaw, so he's the other one alongside David De Gea. Looks great for bonus points when he's been at centre-back and at left-back, to be honest. Should hopefully, with the positive news surrounding Raphael Varane, be back out of that left-back spot. On set pieces as well, which is very key for him. I think overall, with just a little bit of complexity surrounding the right-back situation, there's potential for Malassia to come in at left-back, but overall I think that Dallo and Wamasaka, when Shaw is fit and the centre-backs are there for United, it's Shaw who's nailed at left-back most, and then Dallo and Wambasaka. It's pretty difficult to predict, I've found, even over on the right-hand side. Some games you think are more suited to the more defensive style of Wambasaka, and Dallo is starting them. So it's hard to kind of know what's going through Ten Hag's mind at the moment. I think going with Luke Shaw does seem the most safe and sound thing to do, and a lot of people will probably already own the Englishman. In midfield, then, we're seeing a midfield five of Bruno Fernandes, Bakayo Saka, Matoma, Pascal Gross, and then, finally, Kevin De Bruyne coming in. So, this is quite an interesting midfield five. I think the fact that Marcus Rashford misses out could be a little bit of a hindrance to this side, due to the fact that he's now reported back in training. We've had some positive news. I don't think there should be any sort of rush to sell Rashford at the moment, and he could potentially even be a captain option this week if we hear more from Ten Hag before the deadline about how he's fit and raring to go in these games. But Bruno Fernandes, his teammate, is an equally strong captain option, in my opinion, that you could choose to go for if you're a little bit fearful, like I think I am and other people are, of Haaland being rotated for at least one of these two games in the double for Man City. Speaking of people who might get rotated, Kevin De Bruyne of the Man City side is one who I would probably avoid for the same reason. I think if you're going to go for Man City midfielders, there are a few you can target. And we'll get on to which one I've gone for in a moment, who I think is maybe a little bit more of a risky option. But also that Kevin De Bruyne at a more expensive price point is going to be harder to reach for players. 
Matoma and Pascal Gross, I think Matoma's more than justified his reasoning for a pick as a Brighton asset when they've got a double. Pascal Gross is more of an interesting one. I don't think the underlying data is quite there to support him in certain matches due to the fact that he's been quite prone to be moved around the pitch, sometimes filling in at that right back role he can do. He has had games where he's shunned and perhaps one of these games could be against Southampton, you'd assume would be the more likely fixture for them to do well in. Of course, they've already been relegated Southampton, so haven't really got anything to play for. But there are sometimes these circumstances where teams who've already been relegated seem to want to prove themselves a little bit and do come and put up a decent fight in the last few games. And I know Brighton did well against Arsenal and they've looked good in recent weeks, but I do think the fatigue has caught up with them a little bit with their rather hectic run they've had in. So I don't think it's absolutely necessary that you grab a Brighton triple up and there are other players you can go for. Bakayo Saka is then the final midfielder against Nottingham Forest and a double up on Arsenal assets, in fact, with Gabriel Jesus coming in in the final third. So that is an interesting one. I think Forest are pretty decent at home. Arsenal, it's going to be tough to tell how has that kind of lack of lack of success in the title race going to affect them. It does look all but in Manchester City's title now. They've got one hand on the trophy and Erling Haaland is the man who comes in from that Man City side to take the captain's armband for another game week. So yeah, I'm not sure I'll back Arsenal too much, but on the bench there are some players that could be of interest. Kilman of Wolves, Everton at home doesn't look like too bad a game. Solanke against United is an interesting one. It's a home fixture for Bournemouth, but going with him over some of the other cheaper forwards does seem like a weird move. And then finally, we've got Craig Dawson, another Wolves defender. So the algorithm seems to be backing Wolves for a decent chance of a clean sheet this week out of all the single game week teams with Kepa Arizabalaga, the substitute goalkeeper. We'll move into my team then, and now I have taken a few little risks here, and you could argue that some of my risks are probably ones not worth taking, and I was very torn between certain assets in midfield and certain assets up front, specifically in two positions, which I'll talk about first. The Man City midfield option is either going to go to Gundogan or Foden or Mares. I think you could equally have both Foden and Mares in, because I think those two have a very, very good chance of not starting just one game, but maybe even starting both in the double game week. From what I've seen on Twitter, from people who can get as close to Pep Rulet, that does seem to be the case as well. So Gundogan, although he's the man in form, I think looking at Mares or Foden, especially if you're looking to chase rank at the moment, could be really good too. There's a decent chance Gundogan gets rested in one of those games. I just fancy him for playing these systems where these teams might line up with three at the back and those late runs into the penalty area. He just looks so clinical at the moment. And if he does start, you can back him to get a pretty decent haul. And then finally up front, it was Ferguson against Enciso for that cheap budget forward option from Brighton. I think Ferguson is definitely the more at risk of an early sub. Uh, maybe of obviously Welbeck starting as well in games. But I have chosen to go for him over in Ciso, but I, I really like both of them. So that was very, very hard to split. Let me know who you would have gone with down below, because there is still part of me that wants to change out and put Foden or Mares in and Enciso in up front. But the rest of the team is relatively solid. Apart from that, I have stuck with the armband on Erling Haaland. Marcus Rashford, you know, the injury news is still not the best, I suppose. He has returned to training, but... He could miss out in one of these games, and if it's the Bournemouth game, then that is, you'd have to say, still the kinder of the two fixtures, even with Chelsea's poor form. So I've chosen to go with players like Salah instead, even though he's only got a single game week. Trent as well. Liverpool look in pretty good form at the moment, and those two are the ones to own, in my view, from Liverpool. Pedro Porro's then the only other player of difference, and he's one that I am backing with Tony now out for eight months. Brentford still look really good, don't get me wrong, they looked great in their last game, which was at home, but when we look at the underlying data for Brentford on the road, they have a severe drop-off from how good they are at home compared to how good they are away. Porro's been on a few set pieces, and he has that whole potential in him from, you know, free kicks, from getting assists, four goals, for Harry Kane most of the time it's going to be. But yeah, I think if Spurs do well in that game and they keep a clean sheet, Porro could be one of those type times where he gets an attacking return, gets the clean sheet, and that's going to be a big points haul. So I do like him as a differential, as with the players I've got on the bench. Eze, one who I brought into my own personal team this week and I was very, very happy with, as well as Mark Guayhi, and then finds just some budget forward on the bench as fodder. So yeah, that is my team for this week. The score as of game week 35 after that is 15-16. It looks like, and I don't want to touch wood here, and you know, I don't want to jinx it, I should say, that I'm going to win the Game Week 36 battle. So it should make it 16 all, unless Trippier scores a hat-trick tonight or something like that. 
but it could be neck and neck going into the final two game weeks. We could end up on a draw, which will be, we'll have to decide, some sort of tiebreaker if that is the case, and we end on 17 all. But I'm hoping that I can pull one back in game week 36, and then this team can carry me to the win in game week 37. Thank you very much for tuning in, everyone. Let me know who you think is going to win, Team Eddie or Team Algo, in the comments. And I will catch you all in the next one. Goodbye.